position. And so he has not, alleged, he has not made an allegation that they are the Labour Party's policies or anything like that at all. And I think that is a very order. I'm on my feet. That is a, a somewhat different issue, and I don't see that that was out of order. Point of order, Mr. Point Speaker. of order, the Honourable David Cunliffe. Uh, further to the point of order, Standing Order 3772 requires that the Minister's answers be limited to statements of fact that are strictly necessary to answer the question. And as we traversed on a previous uh, day, Speaker's Rulings 1457 makes clear that the Minister can have no responsibility for the opposition at all, whether he speaks of policies, ideas, conceptions, whims or any other adjective, Mr Speaker, that is ruled out by Speaker's Ruling 1457 and, I might add, about a dozen other Speaker's Rulings that I previously raised with you. Now, Mr Speaker, one could... I would not wish to venture, sir, that one was trying to find loopholes through which the Minister could evade your ruling, sir, but it would appear that trying to change one word and then regurgitating his misconception of what the opposition's views are is completely outside both the, the spirit taken and the order. letter. I think the House has been ruling. sufficiently patient in listening to the point of order. Now, the member strictly is, is, has quoted the, 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 the standing order indeed, but if he listened to half the questions asked in this House so far today, most of them did not comply with the standing orders. And as Speaker, I can't be intervening, and some members look surprised. They just go back and look at the Hansard and check some of the questions asked. Uh, they didn't comply with the standing orders at all. They inserted all sorts of opinion, uh, went on for, I heard one question, went on about four parts to it. And, uh, but I don't intervene because I want the House bill to flow reasonably freely. Now, the Minister was asked about alternative policies. I identified a range of alternative, of, of, of alternative policy stances and then suggested he had heard some of those being, put, being suggested by the opposition. Now, as a throwaway line, if I were to pull up members all the time when they made ministers all the time when they made that kind of answer, the House would become pretty sterile. This is, after all, a political debating chamber. And if the members can't cope in asking questions and dealing with that kind of situation, then you know, I think the, the remedy is in their hands. And I've tried to encourage members to ask very clear, concise questions. If members want to minimise the risk of ministers giving, getting political in their answers, Keep the questions clear and precise. Speaker, the point Honourable point David Cunliffe. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, I understand your ruling, which is that a bit of give and take is part of the business of the House, and of course we all make jests both ways across the chamber. Mr Speaker, this is a rather more serious situation. This is Budget Week. Uh, this is the middle year of a three-year triennium where we are expecting a substantive budget, and the opposition's alternative economic policies are as much in debate as the government's own view. Sir, I would submit to you that a mischaracterisation by the government of the opposition's policy intent in Budget Week is a relatively serious matter and should be treated seriously Order. understanding orders. Order! Should be treated seriously understanding orders as provided for in Speaker's ruling and in keeping with your own ruling. And it's not a matter of whether the Labour opposition's got a sense of humour or not. These simply are not our policies, and it is simply not within the Minister's rights to describe to the well, public what the our policies are. The Member is now are. litigating the, the substance of the issue. I listened carefully to the Minister's answer. He uh, identified, in response to the question asked, a number of issues that he believed would put the strategy he had identified previously at risk. And uh, I can't remember now all four or so items he mentioned, but uh, he then said he had heard some of these being suggested by the opposition. Now, I don't believe that is alleging their opposition policy at all. He didn't say the finance spokesperson had, had made these statements at all. And I, I, I believe that it would be a bit unreasonable if I was to try and prevent ministers from making that kind of comment. Question number three, the Honourable Annette King. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, my question...